All right, Fronius Primo 7.6 and a Fronius Rapid Shutdown Box. So, then we got our other boxes over here. All right, so let's open this up, take a look. Okay, nobody on the internet shows wiring and all that. This is just so I can wire this type of system again at a different house if I buy one. So, got the wires coming down. We got two sets of panels up above on the roof. So we got one set, one set, and then another set. So they come down. The box is labeled weird. So you got one, one negative, one, two negative, one, one positive, one, two positive. So when you're looking at these, this is one string up above. Then this is the other string. So pay attention to that. Match them up. Two and two. One and one. So I don't know why they just couldn't say this is one one positive and one two positive. So you got the same thing on the other side. So if you didn't use this side, it'd be two two and then two ones. Just match them up. All right, so you bring your strings in, then you got your outputs down here. See where it says DC output, behind that is a one, and then it says DC output two, then you got your signals, which we'll talk about that in a minute. So one, DC output one is for one, which is this side of the box only. DC output two is for this side of the box. So we originally hooked these up to the two and ran it over to the inverter. But since we only have two sets of strings up above, we only use this side. So I disconnected these because we we're trying to figure it all out and learn it. So this on and off. One is on, zero is off. They call, I think it's a European on and off instead of just putting on and off. Because I think this is German made stuff or whatever. But you see the day's just starting. My solar panels are at 2,700 roughly watts. I think I 6,200. Like so. Yeah, well, it's cloudy in the middle. Of, so you can see they got little lights in here. Okay, so now the signal. It's all screwed up. Whoever made this had their head in their ass. So over here... I don't know if you can see it. Anyways, it says signal A and signal B. So, you got to have this in here. So, it comes over to here and it's screwed up. Okay, see, I just pulled it. So, now it just killed the panel because you have to have that wire. If you don't, then the rapid shutdown will not turn on the circuit to allow the power to go through to the inverter. So when you wire it, this is how it sets up in there. Now, like that. And you can see there's three connections. So you got signal A and B over here, but up in here, where this goes is in the front. I can't really probably show you. It says N O, like no, and then the middle socket's blank. And then in the very back, it says NC. So, it was kind of a pain to figure it out. So, I had to read. NO is the same as A. No, how'd I say it? Yeah, no is red and A. And then... NC is something different. I We didn't even use it. But in the middle is a black wire that we put in there. You can use whatever color you want, but we try to keep it so we know it. So the black wire is just a common, a ground. So as you can see over here, see, I just can't get the, the shine. But A, oh, you can see A a little bit. So A is N-O, 
And then signal port B is a common. So that's the black wire. So A is hot and the word no on the, over there. Over here, B is a ground and the center wire. Originally, we hooked it up on the pin on the left to the NC and we couldn't get the inverter to work. So it took us lots of reading and understanding. I mean, another guy to help. So. Are you out here? Right here. Oh, all right, let's do this real quick. All right, so in order for the inverter to work, you gotta have AC power. So it kind of back feeds through it. And so when we shut it off, it kills the power. Originally I had that type of disconnects on my DC coming down and it wasn't needed. So I took those off. We got the rapid shutdown. You have to have it so you're code compliant with, it's like a 2014 dash whatever code. If you don't have a shutdown, then they're not gonna pass you so you can do the net metering here in Michigan. But what you have to do is, no, no, uh, here, let's take this off. So, all right, I got the screws already loose. It's stupid how that wire, can you pull that wire through? <coughs> okay. That's what the back of an inverter looks like. These lugs here, just push into these here. So that's what it looks like. Okay. They're heavy. There's little black ears right there. And what the black ears do is just sit here in these loops. All right, so you got your DC coming down, goes into your inverter. Like I said, we disconnected those, which are, I got them just pushed back here for right now. So, we have our wires coming from our DC output one, comes down into here. Here they are. You have to pay attention here. See how it says one positive, one positive, two positive, two positive, negative, negative, negative. So, hot goes into positive, negative over here. So this, I think, allows you to hook up four strings, like the rapid shutdown can do four strings. So, there you see that. Then coming out, you know, here's a ground that goes back up into the inverter, which goes to the ground. It's got that little, that, there's two of them here, two of them over there. Okay, then you got your line one, line two. This is your AC coming out. Your AC now is coming out of here. Goes down in. Then it comes up into your disconnect. Just a disconnect. You know, here's my lines coming up. This is my AC after the inverter converts the solar panels to the AC. Then here's my lines coming out. Then this goes into the house, into the breaker. Biggest thing was, is just, if you're doing it yourself, buy this flex. Buy a roll, it's like 40, 50 bucks. Three quarters and one inch is what we used. We ended up using all the one inch. It's like a 50 foot roll, I think. But you buy these little connections, they slide right in. It just slides into it, you, and you have it on, and you just tighten it down. If you want to take it apart, you unscrew it and just pull it back off. It's that easy. But you got to have those, make it look professional, or they're not going to pass you. Stickers. Stickers, yep. Stickers, solar panel circuits. You know, solar DC disconnect because on the bottom they have an on and off switch. Which I didn't turn down. But, okay. So, stickers there, stickers up above. Now, up above, I'm going to try and video a little without <laughs> climbing up on there. But you have to have your solar panels. No wires can be on the roof. If you have wires on the roof, they're not going to pass you. The next thing is, is like where they come together. See, there's a little walkway in between the panels. So 
So you just can't have the wires coming across. You have to have them in a tube. So we got everything in tubes where they come across, but underneath the panels, they're open wires. So ground. We, I'm not the sharpest on grounds, but you gotta have number six bear. Yeah, just number six bear. Solid, not the single, not the strand stuff. But, uh, the longer piece you get, the better. yeah, see, I didn't have rails. Everything we did, we made ourselves. We didn't buy rails and all that. We made them out of aluminum. But there's, they're called weeps, I think they are. They're, they're like a washer. And when you put them on there, on your solar panels, when they ground, they go to your uh, rail, it grounds them. So, therefore, I didn't have those. So, we bought them connectors and uh, grounded each panel individually with number six. Yeah, let me see one of those. So this is what it looks like. We bought those, screwed them onto the bottom side of like the solar panel and then ran the wire into it. Um, I think Menard's got two packs of them for a buck and a quarter or something like that. We're in Michigan, north of Grand Rapids. But can't have nothing on the roof no wires and when you go in between your panels if you got space where like you can walk down them because i got like four sets of panels up there six in each run and i walk in between them on this side and then on the other side of the roof but uh when you're jumping across try to make it look good mine was a half-ass job to start with then i had a guy come help me so we did all this it looks a lot better like he said most inspectors are not very good in Michigan, so make it look good and everything else. And more likely they'll pass you without any problems. Um, this here, the way the reason there's loop because of rainwater comes down or whatever. It's, if you come down and went right straight in, it could go right into the panel. But since there's a loop, it has less chance of going into it. So. Just make sure everything's off the roof and when you're doing it i recommend you take them ground clamps and screw them onto your panel before you lay the panels down we did it the hard way laying down upside down with a right angle drill and it took hours and small people it was not fun to do so try to do everything think about it when you do each panel zip tie the cords all up put the lug on there for your ground and try to do as much before you screw the panel down. I guess with them weeps, then they only come through and they just ground all the uh, rails. They don't have to do each panel individually. And I'm probably wrong on a lot of this. So don't criticize me. Just help everybody else and leave a positive comment of what you have to do differently. Originally, we sunk two ground rods. In the ground right here eight foot apart or whatever six eight foot but they want to all on the same ground so we had the bare copper and then we switched it over to this so we could ground it to the box which the box is in turn grounded and through the system and all that so i originally had dc disc or not d well my dc lines come down into a disconnect each of them and you got to have that rapid shutdown a lot of people don't understand. All a rapid shutdown is, is to help kill the system faster. It's like most of the power has to be gone in less than 10 seconds for the fire department. And people still think, well, oh, that kills the solar panels. No, solar panels are running all the time whenever the sun's on it. Whether you killed this or killed that or killed that, the solar panels are still putting power to here. Even on a cloudy day, there's 500 volts. On this system and 500 volts on that system so hope this helps anybody and this will be for me in the future when i do a house don't listen to anything i say figure it out yourself hire an electrician have somebody do it i'm doing this so i have a video for when i wire my next house so all right i think that's it but yeah signal ports like i said make sure the black is in the center because that's the ground. And the red goes on the N-O. 
and A. N O red A. So, all right. And, you know, that just goes inside to the panel, which then goes down to a 40 amp breaker. See, like the system, I think, is 36 amps. So we got 40 amp breakers. That might be wrong. If it is, somebody correct me. You know, originally I had 60 in there because that's what come with the box. And like the guy said, you got to keep everything close to the amps it's supposed to be. So, because we read on the bottom of the inverter how many amps it pulls or most comes out. So, all right. I hope this helps. Have fun.